So in the comments, some of you asked about Gradle and why I'm using Gradle over Maven. Um, so I wanna give just a quick uh, user guide into how to use Gradle and what comes with the Gradle setup from the Spring Initializer out of the box. So in this video, you'll learn how to build your project, how to package an executable jar for your Spring Boot application, and even how to bundle a Docker image from it. But let's first talk about what Gradle itself actually is. So Gradle is a build automation tool that allows you to build your projects and automate any build tasks that you want. So you can build your projects pretty much out of the box with a Java plugin, for instance, for Java projects. You can also write your own custom Gradle tasks to automate pretty much anything you want. And also Gradle focuses a lot on performance optimization so that your builds, your tests and everything runs as fast as it can. And also you can see here there are many big companies using Gradle, of course. So beside Maven, Gradle is really one of the primary build tools in the Java ecosystem. And I personally like Gradle, probably because I know it better than Maven, uh, but also because it's more flexible. So if you write your own custom tasks here, uh, you can basically write any Groovy code that you want. Or if you're using the Kotlin syntax, so with .kts, you can basically write any Kotlin code that you want. Whereas in, in Maven, you have the declarative approach where you write your XML files, your prom.xmls. And so it's a little more constrained. And in Gradle, you have an actual programming language under the hood. So essentially, you can write any automation that you want. All right, so let's take a look at some of the things we can do with Gradle. The tasks that we're gonna see, they basically come from the plugins that we have here. So there are a few uh, general Kotlin or JVM tasks, and also there are tasks provided by the Spring Boot plugin. So let's open up a terminal down here. And as you might remember, we have this Gradle wrapper in the project that you can call using Gradle W. Now, depending on your operating system, you might have to call it like this. If it doesn't work, you can also try calling the bat file directly. But for me, with uh, Windows here, it works just fine just calling Gradle W. And this Gradle wrapper is really set up in the Gradle directory here, if you remember. And under properties, it basically just configures where to download Gradle from and which version. So whenever a developer or someone else opens your project, they can just run Gradle W. And if it isn't there yet, it will just download the Gradle wrapper from the specified URL. And so this way, anyone using your project doesn't have to have a local Gradle installation. In fact, I don't have Gradle installed locally right now. So if I try to do Gradle, let's say status, I don't actually have Gradle here, but I can still use the Gradle wrapper with this project. And also the Gradle wrapper is versioned together with your project. So you can always decide which Gradle version you wanna use for this project to build it. And so this way you know which Gradle version is used for your build and that also makes it more reliable. So let's get started down here by running Gradle W tasks. And this will just um, print all the tasks that are available for this project right now. So you can see from the top here, it starts with boot run which allows you to run your project as a Spring Boot application. We're also gonna take a look at the clean tasks and the build task, so over here. And another interesting task here is Boot Jar. So this allows you to assemble your Spring Boot application into an executable jar. So we're also gonna take a look at that. And then since Spring Boot version 2.3, you even have a task boot build image, which builds an OCI image, so um, a certain way to build a Docker image. Uh, based on your Spring Boot application. So those are the ones we're gonna take a look at. Of course, you can also go through the other tasks if you wanna explore them. But for now, let's start off with the clean task. So if you have um, built your project before with Gradle, you should see a build folder here. And this is really where Gradle puts all the uh, build files, so your compiled classes, any jars that it generated and so on. So if I run here Gradle wrapper clean, that's just gonna delete the build directory basically. So if I refresh now up here, sometimes it takes a second. Okay, there it's gone. Um, and then the other way around, I can run Gradle W build, and that's gonna compile the entire project. It's gonna assemble all the sources, 
and it's also going to run uh, by default the test that you have in your project. So you can see here it starts with compile Kotlin. Of course, after you perform a clean, it's going to take um, a few seconds. So one of the ways that Gradle improves this also is that once you've built the project before, it can run um, subsequent builds a lot faster. All right, so here the build actually fails. And I believe that's because we have some tests that don't pass anymore because we're using um, or we changed something about the um, data source that we're using. But at least this way you see that it really does run your tests. So it won't um, build your project if the tests don't pass. Now fixing these is quite easy. And so I challenge you to also try to do this yourself. But basically we're gonna go into our code here. And first of all, we don't wanna use the network data source anymore because it doesn't implement most of its uh, methods. So I'm gonna say qualifier mock. And then in our mock data source, I'm gonna also give it this qualifier here. So this will already fix most of it. So let's take a look and run all the tests again. I'm gonna close this one down for now. All right, so now there are only two test cases that fail here and they're quite easy to fix. So we've basically used the proper JSON uh, syntax now. So this is now in snake case and the same here. So we called this one default, default transaction fee. And then if we run them again, uh, it should all be fine. All right, there we go. All the tests pass again. So let's run um, Gradle build again. All right, nice. So now we have build successful. And also you should have noticed that on the second run, the build phase didn't really take long. So it jumped almost instantly to the test phase simply because it had already compiled the project again. Um, there was also already the build folder. So all it had to do was really run the tests again. So now the next one we're gonna take a look at is Gradle W boot run. And this really just runs your Spring Boot application. So here you can see, you see the same logs as if you ran this from IntelliJ directly. So you see Spring starting up and it started on port 9000. So in some situations, this can be really useful to run your Spring Boot application if you don't wanna run it from your IDE or your jar file. And talking about jar files, let's also take a look at Gradle W and then boot jar. And so this will really just take your project and you can see it's quite fast if you've already built the project before. And it will just assemble it all into a executable jar file. So if you now look under build and then go into libs, you should see a jar file being created here. So if I now go ahead and say Java minus jar, so to run a jar file, and then I give it the build libs, whoops, not Kotlin, libs and the jar file. That's also just another way to run your application. So depending on how you deploy your application, the Spring Boot jar here might be the way that you deploy your actual um, application into production. Of course, if you're using Kubernetes or something like this, you need a Docker image instead. However, since Spring Boot 2.3, like I said, you even have a task that comes out of the box with the Spring Boot plugin called Boot Build Image. And by the way, the casing doesn't really matter with these Gradle tasks. So you can also just write build image like this. And that's gonna assemble a Docker image that really just runs your Spring Boot application. So you can use those for Docker environments, whether Docker Compose or Docker Swarm. And you can also use it to run your application on a Kubernetes cluster. So here you can see now it starts building your image and it just takes the um, project name as the artifact name, just like it did for the jar. And also by default, it's just a snapshot version. So by the way, notice that this will not work if you don't have Docker installed. So make sure you have Docker installed and then it should be able to find your Docker daemon and build your, build your Docker image. All right, so here you can see it use build packs. So this is why they also say uh, it builds an OCI image. Um, and it created quite a few different layers. So the way this Docker image is packaged follows many best practices. It also splits up the Spring Boot application itself into different layers so that if you only change your application, only a very small layer changes. But I don't wanna go into too much detail about this right now. That's a topic for a separate Docker tutorial or course. 
If you would be interested in such a course, let me know down below uh, so that I know which kind of courses you would like to see in the future. All right, but ultimately you should see successfully built image and then it gives you the name of your image. So now taking this, you should be able to just say docker run and then give it the name of your image and that tells docker to just run it. So now there we go, we have at least three ways to run your application now, four actually. You can run it from your IDE, which is great for uh, development and you can also run it in debug mode. You can use gradle w boot run in order to run it from your command line. You can build a jar and then use java minus jar or you can use a Docker image and then run it with Docker. Now, of course, if you wanna bring your Spring Boot app into production, either depending on the environment it's gonna run in, you're gonna create a jar file that can be run on some uh, VM or a Linux machine, or you're gonna package a Docker image to run on something like a Kubernetes cluster. And the best thing is all this comes out of the box now with Spring Boot. So you have this plugin in here if you use the Spring Boot initializer and that gives you the boot run, the boot jar and the boot build image tasks. Now the great thing about Gradle again is you can also write your own arbitrary tasks to automate anything that you want. But that's a topic for a whole nother Gradle course or tutorial. If you would be interested in such a course also let me know down below so I know what to prioritize and which courses or tutorials you would like to see. All right, but that's all for this one. I hope you liked it. If you did, please leave a like below and then I will see you in the next one.